Hey everyone, so in today's video we are going to learn about how we can find cross a site request forgery vulnerability on live web applications. Before going to this video, if you haven't checked out my previous videos, then I recommend you to check that out. The link will be given in the description as well as you can see it on the right side of the screen. Now, if you are new to our channel and if you don't know about our website yet, which is bpractical.tech, then I guess you are missing a lot. Now just open your browser and just type bpractical.tech in your browser and you will be redirected to our website. Over there we have awesome labs related to cyber security as well as web development. So yeah, you can go ahead and check them out and increase your cyber security skills or your web development skills. So for example, in the web development section we have articles, web templates and funding challenges. While in the cyber security sections we have labs and some services. Currently we have CSRF POC generator and also we are going to see that how we can use this CSRF POC generator if you don't have web suit uh, professional edition now click on the labs and right now we have account takeover labs so you can go ahead and check them out and all of these labs are based on real world scenarios so yeah go ahead and increase your cyber security as well as bug bounty hunting skills now finally let's get started so for this uh, video i'm going to take a live website to show you the uh, demonstration of csrf so first of all let us try to understand what is csrf right so in one word we can say in one sentence we can say that csrf allows uh, an attacker to perform uh, uh, an action basically on behalf of the victim right for example suppose over here you can see this, this is a subscribe button right now normally if you click on the subscribe button you will be redirected to our telegram web, uh, telegram channel and you will be subscribed to our uh, telegram uh, channel right but if there was a CSRF vulnerability, let's say there is a CSRF vulnerability in Facebook.com where the CSRF vulnerability was found in the change password functionality. Let's say for an example, right? Now, suppose that I have used that CSRF uh, functionality uh, vulnerability and I have put it on this subscribe button. Now, once you click your subscribe, this subscribe button, behind the scene, what will happen basically is the password will be changed of your Facebook account, right? Without you even knowing. This is because when, when I click on this particular link, so it will send a particular post request on the Facebook that is usually used to change the password. And since a browser always stores cookies with them, so if you're logged in into your Facebook account, then it will automatically assign that cookie with the request that was sending through this button and your account's password is gonna get changed, right? So let's see how we can do this in live action. So for example, for this demonstration, let's say we have a website. So I'm gonna type the website name, thepanichealers.com, right? And now let's say that I want to find a CSRF vulnerability in this particular website, right? Now, make sure to always find CSRF vulnerabilities on those endpoints that requires authentication because the impact will be very high on that cases, right? For example, you can find a CSRF on my account, my profile. So let's say I'm gonna open my account in the new tab, my profile in the new tab, and as you can see, if you can find CSRF in this particular functionality, let's say change, click to change password, then it will be very good, right? Now, over here, if you found a CSRF in one, these functionalities where you can change the details of any user, then it will be also very good, right? So always make sure to try and find those particular endpoints that have a higher impact, right? But you can also find uh, other vulnerabilities, other CSRF vulnerabilities basically, but make sure to find it in the authenticated endpoints right so that will be a huge impact if you find it now i'm just going to open the burp suit and the first thing that you need to do once you open your burp suit is to analyze the request right so you have to check whether the application is handling uh, any csr protection at all right so we are going to see whether this application is handling it or not right so how the application will handle csrf basically it's very simple they will either use a header they will either use some kind of uh, csrf tokens and some other things that we are going to see. So this is the first video, but we are going to see later on CSRF uh, in the later on videos as well. So I'm just gonna turn off the intercept and let's say that I want to change my name, right? If I ask, let's say, I want to change it to victim account. Let's say for example, right? I'm just gonna go down and I'm gonna turn off the intercept and let's click on save. Okay, so it's asking me to type the city. So I'm just gonna type it. So now we are good to go. I think it will work. Let's click on save and as you can see here we are and here is the data that is going right so city.php so it is checking whether the uh, city is available or not 
so i'm just going to intercept the response yeah and this is the main request right this is the main request because as you can see there is a post request going on on the profiles.php and this request is saving our data right and if you check carefully over here these are the cookies right so these cookies tells that uh, the dif difference between the, their users right and now over here as you can see there is no csr protection at all right so how am i able to identify this because it's simply because there is no uh, csrf protection over here in the header like if there were any csr protection it will look something like this xc csrf token and it will have some value we'll also see that how we can bypass this but for now let's see in this case we have no token at all or you can even got some token in the get param sorry post parameters as well like c and something like this uh, csrf underscore token and it will have some uh, random value right so currently we don't have any of this which means that there is a high possibility that this application is vulnerable to cross site request for you right so to confirm whether this is vulnerable or not we can simply do one thing we can just remove this origin header and we can just type instead of this to null or to localhost right and if the server will save our data which means that it is indeed vulnerable to cross site request forgery so i'm just going to turn uh, on the end response and let's see what's the response and as you can see we got 200 okay let's see whether our data got saved and yeah our data was saved right now there is 99.99 percent possibility that this application is vulnerable to cross site request forgery right let's see how we can exploit it how we can create the proof of concept right so i'm again gonna change the name let's say victim to back to fayaz ahmed which is my name and i'm just gonna turn on the intercept and i'm gonna click on save and as you can see we got the same post request and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna send this to repeater right and i'm gonna do nothing i'm just gonna forward this and my name will be changed over here from fayaz right now just go back to bpractical.tech over here let me just type it bpractical.tech again and over here we need to go to the csrf poc generator right now burp suit also offers csrf poc generator but in the community edition we don't have these functionalities because it requires uh, uh, us to pay us a decent amount a higher amount i may say that will eventually allow us to create poc right from the burp suit but currently for those who don't have burp suit pro edition can use this method which i'm going to show you so over here you have to go to the cyber security section and just click on the csr poc generator once you clicked on that we have these many things method encoding data url right so I'm going to show you how we can do this exactly step by step. So first thing that you're going to do is you're going to copy the URL and just paste it over here, right? The first task is completed. The second thing is you're going to copy all of this and just paste it here. That's it. And suppose from the name, I'm going to change my name to something else. Let's say uh, hacked account, right? And you must check the encoding. What's the encoding, right? So it's showing application x w w form URL encoded. Let's see. Yeah. So we have the same encoding, and now that's it. That's all we need to do in order to generate the proof of concept. Let's click on download CSR POC and let's see what happens. As you can see, the the POC has been downloaded. If I'm gonna click on this, right? So we have these many data, and now if I click on submit from here and if this page allowed us to submit a post request on the application which was the pranic healers which means that this site is 110 percent vulnerable right so i'm just going to click on submit and let's see what happens and over here i'm just going to refresh it so let's hit enter okay, i'm just going to get rid of this hashtag let's get enter and as you can see it has shown me hacked account which means that we were able to change the name right from a third party website right so a third party website has the functionality has the ability or has the you know flaw in the main website that allowed it to change the details from one website to another right so this is what makes this csrf so vulnerable because i could have bind that particular 
uh, the particular button in somewhere else let's say in in my own website like and when someone clicks on that and if they are logged in into this account then the their uh, whole account details going to change without even them knowing right so i hope that you have understood that how we can find csrf on live applications as well as you have understood how what is csrf and how we can find it right so we are going to continue this series of how to find csrf and we'll see how we can bypass some of the uh, protections that they commonly use and yeah that's it also i'm currently running two courses on udemy so the first one is hacking windows with python i'm going to just show you right here and the second one is bug bounty the ultimate guide to account takeover so the link is also given in the description and yeah you can go ahead and check them out so if i type hacking windows with python you see the course on the front page is mine right so the first course is over here is mine so this course will tell you how you can create your own custom payload that will be fully un undetectable by any antivirus still now and that will basically help you to understand that how hackers actually create uh, uh, payloads how hackers can hack windows machine and bypass antiviruses right so go ahead and check this out in the second course which i'm going to show you is the account takeover course so if you type account takeover over here as you can see this is the course bug bounty the ultimate guide to a hunt account takeovers where i have explained everything from the beginner level to the advanced level like what is account takeovers how we can find account takeover vulnerabilities how we can dive deep into this application and also we have seen some of the case case studies of live account takeover vulnerabilities right so go ahead and check them out and let me know your thoughts on this so apart from this we are also running a telegram channel where we can discuss many things about cyber security as well as web development or anything you want just go to the link that which is displaying over here or you can just click on the link in the description and you will be redirected to our telegram channel right so with that being said if you have any doubts if you have any issues or if you have any problem at some point any point then you can just let me know in the chat section and i'll be happy to help you out so with that being said thanks for watching